Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at 10 sequels, spin-offs, and companion games that wound up taking over their respective franchises. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new videos all week long, so be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Apex Legends Inside, that equals, but the goal remains the same. We drop. Become an Apex Legend. Apex Legends was widely beloved when it first launched. While many lamented another Battle Royale game saturating the market, the game turned out better than most anticipated. However, it has burned some diehard Titanfall fans. While developer Respawn Entertainment has stated Apex is a part of Titanfall, the lore is not what has driven some fans away. Apex has seen such a resounding success every year, both critically and financially, despite not featuring any mechs like the previous games. And with that money, Respawn hasn't shown much interest in making another traditional Titanfall with a campaign and everything. Sure, Titanfall 2 still has a dedicated player base, but Apex has clearly stolen the show for better or worse. Persona 5 The Shin Megami Tensei series has been around for quite a long time. It wasn't until 1996 when the first Persona released as a spin-off of the franchise. Both series were niche for a time, games that only uber fans of anime and JRPGs would ever be caught playing. But as the years went on with Persona 3, 4, and 5 exploding into the mainstream, well, we witnessed the spin-offs resolve. Ravage them! He's <laughs> Ever since the fifth Persona, we have seen a remaster of Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne and even a brand new mainline game in 2021. Neither game made a big splash in the same way Persona 5 did. For some reason, the mainline games just don't capture the mainstream's attention. And so, Shin Megami Tensei is left to live in the shadow of its younger sibling. You know that a bunch of people are going to pick up Vengeance though when that comes out. <laughs> WWE 2K22 Always seeks out the highest level of competition, and I think he'll get it tonight. The Ukes era was super rough for WWE fans. Between 2K13 and 2K20, the franchise has strayed far away from the arcadey nature of previous games and started making mechanics overly complicated. When visual concepts brought the franchise back after the catastrophic 2K20 and after Yuke's exodus, many were surprised to find out an incredible new wrestling game. Each competitor showing they've done their homework. Leaping into the wheelbarrow, up and down. 2K22 brought simplified controls back, letting players pull off crazy maneuvers with just a couple of inputs. On top of that, many modes were reworked with better narratives, concepts, mechanics, and more to make 2K22 feel like a massive package for WWE fans. Oh, and the character models, for once, looked way, way better than any 2K game before it. It's almost like the series has been reborn with a new identity, and 2K23 further solidified that belief. The cover! One, two, three, and it's over! Finally, it's over! Fallout 3. Before Bethesda bought the IP from Interplay, Fallout was an RPG played from an isometric viewpoint. Action points dictated what you could do on your turn before enemies retaliated, too. But when Bethesda began development on Fallout 3, they approached things much more differently. We're talking first-person cameras, action points being less restrictive during combat, and fights happening in real time rather than in turns. Since then, this format has been the identity of Fallout for several games. You can still experience the original games on PC, but they are now considered a relic from their era. Not even the Carrion Eaters are interested in your radiated corpse. Jackbox Series 
how do we do? Well, I've seen worse. You Don't Know Jack saw a pretty successful period in the mid to late 90s. With its humor and clever questions incorporating pop culture with trivia, it was hard to find someone who didn't have a copy of You Don't Know Jack, but owned a computer. Unfortunately, the series went dormant for several years before being brought back for a brand new game in 2011. Why not try five, five dollar, five dollar artwork? The series returned once more for the very first Jackbox Party Pack in 2014, but as more people became attached to games like Drawful and Fibbage, developer Jackbox Games started focusing more on original games. You Don't Know Jack has since taken a backseat in the Jackbox series, with its last iteration being a part of the Jackbox Party Pack 5 in 2018. I'm not in love with it, but I'm willing to consider it a friend, even though... You don't know Jack! Fire Emblem Three Houses Looks like your first job will be to quiet down this racket. I don't envy you. Now, every Fire Emblem can be played as its own thing. Very rarely do the games cross over with each other. However, Three Houses has kind of taken over almost every discussion surrounding the IP. It's more rampant than when Awakening launched on Nintendo 3DS back in 2013. We can understand why, though. How many games pack in three different campaigns that total up to more than 100 hours of playtime? You require aid? We won't hold back! <laughs> and there aren't any specific Fire Emblem games who have gotten such a massive amount of representation in the form of guest appearances and spin-offs. Honestly, we wouldn't be surprised if the next mainline Fire Emblem follows a similar blueprint to Three Houses. The King of Fighters series. We suppose you could say King of Fighters is SNK's own Super Smash Brothers. You've got characters from Fatal Fury, Samurai Showdown, Art of Fighting, Psycho Soldier, and many more showing up to duke it out. Thing is that those franchises have long been dormant or just haven't had that many releases since King of Fighters took off. Because of that, King of Fighters has basically absorbed the aforementioned franchises as they all fade further and further into obscurity. Artistic finish. Rabid series. <laughs> There are many fans who still hold some vitriol against the Rabbids today. The maniacal buns didn't exactly come into their own like most IPs typically do. Instead, they were introduced in a spin-off for Rayman titled Rayman Raving Rabbids, where our floaty-limbed pal is kidnapped by the bunch and forced to take part in various ridiculous minigames. From there, Ubisoft started belting out new Rabbids games almost every year, as Rayman slowly started getting neglected and put in the back seat. He enjoyed a brief resurgence in 2011 and 2013 with Rayman Origins and Rayman Legends, but even then, he was cast aside as the Rabbids got even more games, more spin-offs, and even a TV show. Where is Rayman now? Well, he's a raging alcoholic news anchor in Captain Laserhawk, and he was in a Mario Plus Rabbids DLC. And that's it. Final Fantasy VII. Much like Fire Emblem, just about any Final Fantasy game can be played as its own thing. But ever since Final Fantasy VII, we've noticed how no other game in the franchise is talked about the same way as Cloud and Friends. Final Fantasy VI, IX, and X get praise, sure, but they're never revered on the same level as VII. We get it, the music is great, the story is captivating, and Tifa is a bay. Additionally, the real-time combat introduced here would influence the later games. But given the spin-offs, the Advent Children movie, guest appearances, and now the remakes, we wouldn't be surprised if some players only ever play Final Fantasy VII and no other game in the IP. Super Mario 64 We 
have seen Mario take on so many different genres. There's the classic 2D platformers, the puzzle-based Dr. Mario games, and even a blend of the two in Mario vs. Donkey Kong. However, whenever Mario is brought into the conversation, Super Mario 64 is the first to come to everybody's minds. The game was so revolutionary for its time, and it captured the hearts of so many players that it's all anybody wants now. Even after we've gotten 3D Mario games like Sunshine, Galaxy, Galaxy 2, 3D Land, 3D World, and Odyssey, every conversation around Mario goes back to Mario 64 in some way or another. Yeah. But what game do you think has overtaken its franchise? Did it make our list? Let us know down in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great videos every day. War. War never changes. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.